In this video, I'm going to be talking about the economics of love and of altruism and I'm going to pull out a paradox out of an economic model of love that's really fun. So first, social preferences and behavioral economics are just where your utility depends on someone else's utility. And social preferences is a pretty big umbrella category. It accounts for altruism, spite, reciprocity, inequality aversion, a bunch of concepts like that. For this video, we're thinking about love or altruism, where you get utility out of someone else's utility, happiness from their happiness. And it is worth mentioning that some people don't believe in pure altruism, and there is pure and impure altruism, where impure altruism is where you're doing something either for the social credit or else because it gives you self-esteem for doing it, rather than actually caring about the other person's utility. So some people will argue that that all altruism is sort of in that impure category, but for the purpose of this video, we're going to assume pure altruism exists, and I do believe it exists, and we're gonna model it. All right, so here is the model, and we're going to imagine a husband and a wife do this model, and the husband and wife have a fixed amount of time to spend together. So there's gonna be a time budget constraint. And there's only going to be two things they can do. Either they can go fishing or they can go dancing together. And the choice variables here are, of course, how much time do you spend fishing? How much time do you spend dancing? The budget constraint is just that the addition of those two times has to add up to their time together. And there's diminishing marginal utility over the time spent doing both. Now, you also notice that there's this importance weight beta, and beta is how important the time spent dancing is to you. And one minus beta is how important the time spent fishing is to you. So you could almost imagine that a percentage, how important is, is each one as a percentage of your total utility. Now, we might imagine before the husband and wife met, she really liked dancing and he really liked fishing and neither of them had ever really engaged in the other activity. But they meet each other and they find that when you engage in that other person's favorite activity, that other person just loves it. They get so much utility out of doing that together with you. So before they met, the importance weight on the other person's activity was probably zero to you. But now that you met and now that you care about making them happy, your importance weight on the thing that makes them happy goes way up. That's the model. Now what's the paradox here? Well, the paradox is imagine that all you cared about was the other person's utility. So if that's the case, you're going to put a 100% importance weight on the thing that they love and a 0% importance weight on the thing that you love. So would that be the most loving possible person available? No. And for a moment at least, let's just imagine that that is the most loving possible person and we're gonna disprove that in just a second. But just imagine that. So I don't care at all about myself. All I care about is making you happy. What's the problem here? Well, if you look at these two equations, her equation and his equation, now she only cares about fishing and he only cares about dancing because they only care about the other person's utility to make the other person happy. But that doesn't make any sense. Like it creates this paradox because now him going dancing with her isn't at all part of her utility function. She just wants to make him happy by going fishing with him. But her love of fishing with him no longer makes him happy because all he cares about is making her happy. So the model kind of blows up and doesn't work anymore. And so if you actually look at this problem and think about how could you actually maximize the love between the people, it's going to be something where both of them still care about doing their activity and also cares about the other person getting utility from, from their activity. So one of the insights here is that our desires, our enjoyment of fishing or dancing, are in some ways the medium through which love is expressed. And we all know that the expression of love through that activity is way better than the activity itself. We know that. But having your own desires and cultivating your own desires is important in order to, for love to be expressed between two people in, in like a tangible, time-worthy way. So that's just a fun little exercise thinking about 
the economics of love and modeling it. Now there's a few things about modeling about and about love that I'd like to point out through this example. One is there's a difference between decision utility and experience utility, where decision utility is what utility actually drives the choices you make. And of course, economists tend to believe in revealed preference, meaning whatever choices you make, those things reveal what's inside your heart in a way that maybe what you say about your, your preferences doesn't. And of course, I think both of those matter. I do think there are things about our experience and our utility that are never going to be expressed through decisions we make. As a matter of fact, people with more power have more ways of expressing their, their preferences through decision making. People without power oftentimes just have to go along, so they don't even get to reveal their preferences. In any case, I just want to point out here that decision utility is the utility that's attached to a particular choice variable or a particular decision someone makes, and it's the utility that makes that choice make sense. On the other hand, experience utility is the actual utility that you sort of experience in your heart that may never be observable from the outside. But when it comes to love, a lot of times we judge a partner's love for us based on their decisions. Are they making room for us? Are they spending time with us? Are they doing things we like to do? Are they giving us gifts? Are they giving us words of affirmation? But of course, any decision is going to be colored by a number of factors, including your lover's perception of your preferences, which might be false. They might misperceive your preferences or the salience of different decisions that they're making and therefore they're making a decision that's not in line with what you perceive love to be. So what I'm saying is decision utility is not perfect at revealing actual utility because it's colored by importance weights and salience weights and other exogenous forces that are sort of entering into the function. And it's actually really hard to observe utility. So decisions that someone makes are one of the main ways we do that. Now there's other ways such as how they express themselves, body language, all that stuff. But a good part of the way we judge someone's utility and, and therefore their love for us if we're defining utility as utility for another person's utility is through their decisions. Now the second question I'd like to think about through this model is can you change your own utility function to become a more loving person? Well, okay, with behavioral economics, there is habit formation. And habit formation is basically when you make a decision day after day after day, it sort of gets encoded from the system two deliberative decision making where you're having to think carefully about a decision and it becomes over time automatic. So it actually changes how much effort you need to make that decision. It becomes a habit. And there's different ways of modeling this. One is using how many times in the past, like how many days in the past week have you drunk coffee? And if you've had coffee every single day for the past week, then it becomes so automatic that not having the coffee is going to be a higher cost to you. So that's, that's one way of modeling that. The question with love though, is if we engage in loving acts, which are at first motivated by the honeymoon phase of love where we just love making that person happy, but eventually that, that wears off, in which case we can start to intentionally make decisions that we'd make if we were in the honeymoon stage, even if we don't actually feel it. And by making those decisions, they can go from our system one to our system two automated way of interacting in the world. And the question here is, if you have a decision that you've made that is a loving decision, but you've made it sort of out of commitment, out of habit, and it's become encoded so th such that you have these loving habits that you don't even think about. As a matter of fact, they're not built into your utility, they're built into your habit, which does appear in your objective function, but it appears more in a mechanical sense. Is that actually love? And that's a good question, because to some degree, acting as if you're loving, even when you're in a bad mood or irritated, to some degree that's actually a more loving act than acting out of love in a moment when you just really want to make that person happy. 
Both of those things are love, but one of them is almost counter to love. But at the same time, the fact that it's higher cost to do the loving action when you're not feeling it or when you're in a bad mood, in some ways that's a deeper form of love. And when it comes to habit formation, I, I think one thing that might matter here is that habits that are costly, like going to the gym or eating healthy, cooking your food, or even brushing your teeth, some of those healthy habits, they, they aren't completely automatic. They can become pretty automatic. I mean, I don't really think about whether I'm not I'm gonna brush my teeth. I just sort of automatically go in and my body starts doing it while I'm thinking about other things. But going to the gym is definitely not that automatic for me. And loving acts towards a partner, in some ways they, they take some upkeep even when they're habits. You, you have to make adjustments. You have to adjust to their mood. There's enough upkeep in a lot of these actions that they're not quite as automatic as brushing your teeth. So I don't know. I, I tend to think that the long run I'm committed to this habit formation form of love, do it even when you don't feel it, is a more powerful type of love. And I guess in some ways that's like a meta model where there's the model in the moment that it's sort of like, do you kiss your spouse when they come home even when you're irritated with them and grouchy and hangry? Or do you kind of slight them that day? That decision, if you're making it just in the moment, the decision might be just slight them, don't give them the kiss. But if you've got this meta thing going on where you've decided I'm going to do actions A, B, and C regardless of the way I feel in the moment, and that plan ourself versus do ourself, the plan ourself wins the battle, that is a deeper form of love, maybe. I'm just thinking these things through as I go. Well, I guess I've thought enough about that. Um, I hope you've had fun thinking about love economics with me. Economics is awesome.